Hi all, welcome back to my channel. It's Leah here from Leah Study World. And today I'm back with a book review. It's... I don't know, this video might be very long because I have a lot of books to get through. It's all about my decluttering books. My eyes itching. Um, yeah, I just thought maybe if you need inspiration like me, because I always find it very difficult to declutter, then maybe these books might help you. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with my favorite one. And it is, of course, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I've got it in German. This is the one that I, the copy that I actually read and then I bought it in English as well because I love the cover. <laughs> really stupid reason, but I've kept them both. Um, a little bit dusty. Oh God. Yeah, I love these books. Um, if you're not, you're probably by now familiar with the Marie Kondo method or Maria Kondo method because everyone is by now. Like I discovered her in 2014, I think, and I was gonna make videos about it, but this was before I'd started YouTube and I didn't know how to like edit my videos. So I had lots of footage, but I never edited it. And oh uh, my God, it's just, it was just such a drama. So anyway, I, I never, those videos never made it online. But I, I wanted to be, or I was one of the first to recommend the Marie Kondo method to you. Or would have been, but I couldn't be because I didn't know how to edit. And now, by now, everybody knows about her. But anyway, just a little recap. Oh, also, yeah, in German it's called magic cleaning. How uh, the right way to tidy changes your life. Oh my god, there's a spider carcass on there. Oh my god. <laughs> I have too many books, obviously. Edit this out. <laughs> um, if this was a TV show, they wouldn't edit it out for sure. But yeah, just a little recap, as I was saying. Um, so the main, I really love how the question she uses is, does it spark joy? So you pick up an item and she says it's important to pick it up and touch it because then you can feel the energy of the item or like, or you're, you become more aware of what your connection is to the item, what your relationship with the item is. But I'm sure I've done it without touching the actual item. So anyway, it's a bit hard. I don't know, but I, I, I'm sure if even if I think about something, I can gorge how I, is that the right word, gorge? How I feel about it. But anyway, um. So you ask yourself, does it spark joy? Which is a really useful question. And then it has, in English, the full title is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing. If you haven't heard of this book yet and you want to order it, this is what it's called. But um, you go in a specific order, you go category by category, which I feel like, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I feel like that's what I did before anyway. Like even if I decluttered my desk, it would be stationary that I decluttered because that's where it was kept. Like, or if I decluttered my bookshelf, then it would be books that I was decluttering um, or working on because I would kind of store things category by category, which only makes sense. But yeah, it's very important to go category by category, not room by room. And then you, um, oh, what I also wanted to say was, I'm not sure if I, I don't remember, like, about every single book, the details inside the book and how I felt while reading it. So some reviews will be better than others, but there are certainly a lot of books to check out for you guys. Um, but yeah, you go category by category, and I believe the categories, the order of the categories are clothes, books, paper clutter, miscellaneous, for example, CDs or kitchen items, and then sentimentals last. And it's very important to do sentimentals last because you get stuck, you're more likely to get stuck if you haven't, you need to hone your joy uh, sensitivity factor or whatever you want to call it the 
I don't know what to call it, like your sensor of what brings you joy and what doesn't. And you practice that with the other categories that are easier because when something's sentimental, it's obviously harder to let it go. And at least because of the rarity factor that you can't just repurchase it so easily. Yeah, these are the, this is basically the breakdown of the method. And I love her method. These are my favorite decluttering books, or this one is really, because this is the one I've read. <coughs> and um, I feel like there is an answer to every decluttering question in here. Even though I still struggle. I still struggle, what was that? Because I have attachments that are very strong. And everything brings me joy. For every item, there's a reason to keep it. <laughs> I'm sure there's also a reason to let it go, but I don't listen to that. I listen to the reason to keep it. Um, no, I don't know, if you're new here, I do, I do a lot of decluttering, so I, I recently went through my makeup drawers and decluttered quite a bunch of things. Before that, it was my books, so like I do try, and I do have, make little progress little by little, but all in all, when you look at what I still own, I feel like it's a lot. It's still too much. But even though I still struggle, I feel like there's an answer to everything in here. For example, what you're supposed to do, according to this book, if you really can't bring yourself to let something go, is keep it with confidence. Not keep it in a maybe pile where it just lies around for a long time and you don't tend to it, but actually put it back in your shelf or wherever it belongs and keep it with confidence and trust that the day will come where you'll be ready to let it go. Except I feel like, for example, if you have a move coming up, then you might not have the time to wait till that day comes where you are capable of letting it go or where you're ready to let it go. I don't know if capable is the right word, it sounds a bit mean, but... Um, yeah, I, that might put you under pressure, but, or just little things, um, like hugging the item goodbye if it was a favorite. And then, oh yeah, uh, uh, this might be a good point to recap, is that you thank the item before discarding it. And it's not so much about gratitude as it is about closure. You actually find closure when you thank the item. Um, it helps you to let go, which I've also experienced that, so I think it's a really useful tip. And yeah, it's, yeah, when you have a favorite item that you're letting go, maybe you're over it, maybe you've stopped reaching for it, but it used to be your favorite, and now you're like, I, I can't let it go because it's my favorite, but I don't use it anymore. It's, you're ready to let it go, it's, it's the right time, and uh, you just, you give it a big old hug. You can even kiss the item, <laughs> that's what I sometimes do if I'm not wearing lipstick. Um, to say goodbye like you would a good friend who's leaving the country or something. And uh, it helps you to find closure and to let go. So I think these books are awesome. Maybe I should show this one again because I've been showing the other one the whole time. Should I read the synopsis? I feel like if then I have to do it for every book and I'll just read it for this one. Despite constant effort to declutter your home, do papers still accumulate like snowdrifts and clothes pile up like a tangled mess of noodles? Japanese cleaning consultant Maria Kondo takes tidying to a whole new level, promising that if you properly simplify and organize your home once, you'll never have to do it again. That's another point I was going to mention, that she doesn't have any relapses, clients who relapse. <clears throat> because once you do it, when you do it for all time. But apparently there was one hoarder who has actually relapsed and it was a humbling experience for her to realize that even her method has limits. But hoarding is like next level. It's very hard to let go of Kata as a hoarder. So I feel like she's still the best organizing consultant out there. Um, most methods advocate a room-by-room room or little-by-little approach, which doom 
you to pick away at your piles of stuff forever. The, Kondo, the KonMari method with its revolutionary category by category system leads to lasting results. In fact, none of Kondo's clients have lapsed and she still has a three month waiting list. With detailed guidance for determining which items in your house spark joy and which don't, this international bestseller featuring Tokyo's newest lifestyle phenomenon will help you clear your clutter and enjoy the unique magic of a tidy home and the calm motivated mindset it can inspire. Also, she says your real life starts after decluttering. Like when you brought, got your life in order and apparently decluttering kind of organizes your mind as well. Like it brings your life in order. You, for example, letting, you may be letting go of a painful time in your life that you needed to grieve. And while letting go of those items, it helps you with the grieving process. And then you, while letting go of the item, you're letting go of that negative memory or like your attachment to it. And so it kind of sorts out your soul as well. Apparently that's, that's the theory. Like I, <laughs> I'm sure it, I'm not there yet because I still struggle with letting go, but, um, this is kind of what it's meant to do and then it invites in the new and the better life afterwards that's the theory it hasn't really happened for me yet so i don't know but i'm only in the middle of decluttering so this might be a bit too far uh thinking too far or uh, too high expectation but yeah that's she said she has or many of her clients have experienced that so who can argue with that Let's move on to the next book, otherwise this video will be very, very long. <clears throat> I have the life-changing manga of Tidying Up, which is very cute, but I only bought it because I'm a, a fan of Maria Kondo's. I don't think it's necessary to have this if you have these books, or if you have the, this book. Um, but it's fun, and it's kind of easier to understand maybe it's good for children if you want she actually has a children's book out as well which i don't own because i'm not a child and i don't have children yet but um <laughs> i'm not pregnant don't think that <laughs> but um that would be a nice way of teaching your child to declutter and organize and tidy up but this could also be maybe for a little bit older children very fun it's just a cute read the the drawings and they are so cute yeah i just got it because i'm her fan but i've read it obviously and it explains the whole konmari method in a kind of a fun manga kind of way so this could be a nice a different way of learning about the konmari method if you're interested or if you love mangas this could this would be for you but you don't need it if you have this <clears throat> same for this one it's called spark joy an illustrated guide to the japanese art of tidying by marie kondo it's oh, why is there a little bookmark in there that i made myself i'm sure i maybe i read it again and then i didn't finish it because i finished it the first time So how can I explain how it's different to, to the life-changing magic of tidying up? This is like a guide, an illustrated guide. It's, I don't know how to explain the difference. Each chapter is like Komono, which is, uh, Komono is the miscellaneous. It's basically the same thing but a different structure I, I'm struggling to explain the structure how, how the structure is structured but it's diff it's it has like bags or CDs is it here where's the CDs I don't know it has like and then it explains what you're meant to do but in at the beginning of the books I distinct of the book I distinctly remember her kind of making you promise 
to not skip the categories or not jump from one category to another but to go in order because that's the apparently the best way to get your house in order and um yeah i found this a bit useless because i've already read this i feel like this answers all your questions so you don't really need this but because i'm her fan i bought it and i thought i expected more from it to be honest but it's not a bad book it's it's good but i feel like you can choose between these two but this one was the first one but i feel like because she made you promise that you don't mess up mess around with the categories then i feel like she may have been reluctant to write this if that makes sense like i feel like this is the book that you are meant to read and then um after requests from the readers i i believe if i remember this correctly she wrote this one but you don't need to so i feel like this one is the better book because it, it doesn't get you in danger of messing up the categories like this explains it all so you don't really need this but it's still a nice read and it can be helpful if you're looking to declutter or maybe you find this one cheaper and you just buy this one instead of this one but i would recommend to read this one first I like I feel like you don't I don't, I don't know you don't really need this but I, I would still recommend it it's it's a good book but it didn't really do anything for me more than the life-changing magic had already done <clears throat> then we have joy at work which is obviously about your workplace which is also by Maria Kondo <clears throat> excuse me please but it's also by Scott Sonnenschein Sonnenschein, if you spell it with another N and with a C here, then his name means sunshine in German. Scott Sonnenschein and Marie Kondo. And obviously, it's about how to tidy up and declutter your workplace. So, I think if you live in a, live in, if you live. <laughs> if you live in an office, if you work in an office, or if you have a specific workplace for yourself where you actually have your own possessions or like books you don't need to reference or anything um rather than working in hospitality for example if you work in an office or if you have an office at home um then this might be the book for you it might be more useful than if for you than it is for me but well i have i have obviously the ebay room but I do declutter that too. I recently decluttered my stuff that I, my unsold stuff, um, because some of it, I didn't see myself making a lot of money off on it, so I just decluttered it. But I haven't really used this book for it, to be honest, but this might be very useful for someone who works in an office. But what I was gonna say was, I really like her methods more in this than his methods. I feel like she knows, I, I'm just her fan. I, I feel like she knows what she's talking about. I'm not saying he doesn't know what he's talking about, but her whole spark, does it spark joy method. I'm just so behind the methods. Like I, I so, I, I so um, stand behind the method. And I'm, I'm such a fan that I just liked her parts in the book more, but they obviously collaborated for a reason so yeah this might be very interesting for, for you if you work in an office but again you would treat books as books paper clutter as paper clutter and the stationery like miscellaneous so i feel like everything is answered in this one but it it's just a bit more office specific so it can help you to clarify what you need to do in your office then we have The Art of Discarding by Nagisa Tatsumi, How to Get Rid of Clutter and Find Joy. This is the book that Marie Kondo was inspired by. Um, I just remember that I liked it. I don't remember exactly her method. Like, um, But it's like structured in a way where I don't know if you can see what situation you might be in and then what you can do. It's its structure is interesting. 
I don't remember her saying that you can limit yourself to a certain amount of items per category and then stick to that. And Marie Kondo says you don't really need to do that. So I don't really believe in it, but it can be helpful if you know how much of each you need, then it helps you to not overstuff your life. But I don't really believe in that. So anyway, yeah, it was a good book. I would recommend it, but I just don't remember the details anymore. It's such a long time ago that I read it. So maybe I have to reread it. Um, then we have Kurashi at Home, How to Organize Your Space and Achieve Your Ideal Life by Marie, Marie Kondo. This is what it looks like. And this is the back. I don't know if you can pause to read. I don't know if the writing will be clear. Maybe I should read it out. I just I have struggled to explain this book. It has a lot of images. Inspiring, beautiful, minimalist images. Rainbow order of books. I used to do that in my teens. I'm thinking of starting it again, but I, I like the structure of my books, so I'm not sure if I want to break it up. Yeah, I would recommend this book, but I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> um, and also I got, it's £25, but I got it for 18 and I got it, I got it when I was going to an event by, with like a Marie Kondo, and she signed it. This is my name, Leah, and then she signed her name. And I'm so glad I bought the book because I wasn't sure if I, I was thinking to maybe wait till it's cheaper somewhere on eBay and buy it then. And I didn't know there was going to be a signing. So I'm so glad I bought this book that I got it signed and got something signed by her. Shall I make two parts of this video? Oh no, this is just going to be a really long video. What can I do? But this kind of goes beyond the life-changing magic of tidying up. So I feel like with all her other books, the life-changing magic already covered it. But with this one, there's like new content in there. So I would definitely recommend to get this book as well. Um, for example, Cultivate Joy Outdoors. Um, give Back to the Community. She even has some recipes in here. Lessons from my grandfather. Oh, I um, I think Kurashi means lifestyle. I have to tell you that. I want to read out to you the different parts. A dialogue with yourself. A dialogue with your home and possessions. Visualize your ideal home. Oh, I forgot to say the life-changing magic of tidying up. The first thing you do is visualize your ideal lifestyle, your ideal home. Your joyful morning, your joyful day, your joyful evening, and then conclusions. And some other stuff. So yeah, um, so it has like six parts, this book, which covers lots of different things. And then at the end... We have how to spend my ideal day. You can actually fill in this planner or whatever, how to spend your day to make it most jo spark most the most joy it can. Um, but I haven't filled that in. <laughs> I'm a little bit iffy about writing into books. I like to keep them pristine. I do it sometimes, but not with this precious, precious book. Um, yeah, I hope this or teach your children to tidy as part of playtime. Like this, this is how it goes beyond the life changing magic of tidying up and covers different subjects. And I think it can be really useful. So I would definitely recommend. And by now I haven't checked how much it costs on e places like eBay or Amazon, but by now it may actually, oh, Amazon is always more expensive than eBay in, in terms of books, I feel like. Um, I but it may have come down a lot. It may be really cheap by now because it's 
the older a book gets the more cheap it becomes but i'm not sure about that so i might be wrong and not that you get your hopes up <clears throat> let's stay with the japanese people because this is all the marie kondo related books now we have goodbye things by fumio sasaki he's also a japanese minimalist this is what he looks like I like this book I would recommend it but I do feel that the Marie Kondo method really covers everything and with the, all the other books I just don't feel like it covers every single question you might have with the Marie Kondo method I have questions that I think it doesn't cover but then I find as time passes I find out the answer maybe in the TV show uh, tidying up with Marie Kondo or spark joy with Marie Kondo or just how other people have re maybe rephrased uh, the book in, in, in other YouTube videos then I find out the answers and I found out that there is an answer and I just didn't know what it was so I'm the one who's wrong not the book <laughs> whereas with these books there are a lot of uh, suggestions on how to declutter but I don't feel like it's as extensive as the Marie Kondo method. So this book has a couple of images at the beginning here. You can see the difference from how he used to live to how he lives now. And a lot of more other pictures as well. So the beginning has like color pictures I have to say. But it's, it's a good book. And he has a lot of, he has like a whole list of, see, uh, wait, numbers 10 and 11. He has like a whole list of points he made, makes. So these are good, this is what I mean, these are good suggestions but they're a bit random rather than covering everything you might want to know it's just my impression but uh, to you this might be the bible of decluttering i hate saying that because i feel like the bible is holy but anyway even though there's no one holy there but god but you know what i mean like you shouldn't call every book the bible because the bible is special but for want of a better word and i was going to talk to you about the silent to-do list this is something that's kind of well known on social media I think um, all these possessions in his theory are like they all call out to you like all your books say read me read me the TV says watch me or maybe dust me um, yeah some decoration might be saying dust me clean me um, all of these things and you have the silent to-do list that you don't get to and it's just overwhelming and it puts subliminal stress on you so it's easier to live with fewer possessions because then the side to do list is shorter and you actually get to what you need to do which is an interesting theory and i feel like there's something to that so yeah i would definitely it's i enjoy this book very much and i would recommend it to you <sighs> i don't know where to continue i have two books by joshua becker the more of less and the minimalist home one of them my mom bought me i can't remember which one was the one she bought me and which one i bought later when i finally got to an affordable price on ebay um i like these books but I don't love them so um, again I just I don't know how to better explain it but I feel like the advice is like sometimes disconnected or just random I don't know and and the Marie Kondo method just covers everything I don't know how to uh, better explain it but but this is still good advice but you might still be at a loss for what to do in certain situations after reading these books. But he has other books out as well. But um, 
Josh Novak is a well-known minimalist. He also has a YouTube channel if you want to check him out before buying the books. Maybe you can see if you like his thinking and then you can decide to get the books later. Oh my god, it's so warm because of the candle. <laughs> but I don't want to open the window now. It would be too loud to hear. Oh my gosh, this video will be so long. I hope you enjoy, uh, I hope you enjoy long content. I do, but yeah. Nowadays I limit my social media intake to an hour a day, so I don't want to watch videos that are an hour long. I sometimes do, but sometimes I just want to watch more videos, so I'll pick the shorter ones. Well, I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's useful and helpful for you. What I wanted to tell you was that he is Christian, and you can tell in this book. So if that's something that's anno that annoys you, these books might not be for you. But as a Christian, I don't mind and I, I like it. Um, it's because like Christ also lived with few things and kind of recommended this to other people. And he said to this one dude that what he needed to do to get to the kingdom of heaven is sell all his possessions and then follow him, follow Christ. And then the man became sad because he was rich. And doesn't saying go like it's easier for a camel to fit through the hole of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven? I think there's very rich, they have very generous rich people who are very nice. I'm sure they have a chance. I can't speak for God, obviously, but I'm sure such a person would have a chance to get into the kingdom of heaven. But then they are really cruel, cold-hearted, psychopathic, power-hungry, rich people who don't care for the pain of- or care about the pain of other people. I, th I- I can't speak for God, but this is how I understand the sentence, that this is the kind of rich person I think about when I hear that saying. Because it really makes sense that such a person would not enter the kingdom of heaven. But if they just mean rich people, <laughs> maybe I'm in danger. I'm not rich, but I have a lot of stuff that I have a hard time parting with and if you need to part with your stuff to get into the kingdom of heaven I'm in trouble but that's an that's kind of a different discussion I just wanted to let you know because I don't know how you feel about religion but it's not like full of that he just mentioned it sometimes and I think it's fair enough because he shares with you what he has learned on his decluttering journey, so it only makes sense that he would share that with you. Um, I think one of these books I haven't actually finished, but I took the bookmark out, otherwise I would know which one was the one that I um, bought myself, because I bought that after my mom had given me the other one. So, I don't know. Here are some pieces of advice. Remove duplicates and little used items. Give every item a proper home, which is very important. Clear the counters. Purge the pantry. Yeah. See how it's like... Purge the pantry is kind of something you do when you're going room by room. But... Getting rid of duplicates is actually a method like one of the things you can do but purge the pantry is just like the next room you know the same way you could say declutter your living room and it's kind of obvious so it's kind of it doesn't fit together the advice i don't know how to explain it better but i'm not saying i'm not trying to diss these books because i think these can be really helpful for someone let me put them here just so you can read the title again so if you want to buy these, you can. I was going to add something about the life-changing magic of tidying up, but I can't remember what it was. Oh yeah, uh, and the life-changing of magic of tidying up is very important to declutter first, and which is something I also learned in 2012 out of my own experience declutter first and then tidy up otherwise you just fill your house with more things like we used to get these boxes from poundland and um put things in there and i was like but is this really gonna help my husband got them 
and then we put stuff in there and then the room looked free and so we filled it up more and there was actually hard to product it. So just storage, new storage solutions or organization or methods don't help. You have to actually declutter so you have less stuff to take care of and then you can tidy up and also another important point is giving everything its own home so that you know where to place it. Um, I just wanted to, for the sake of the wholeness, no, completeness of me recapping the method, I wanted to say that. Let's move on. I don't know how to pronounce this word. Dostedning? Dostedning? The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning by Margareta Magnusson. Oh my god, it has a little uh, receipt in there. Don't need that anymore. Oh my god, I'm so warm. Can you even see the candle? I put it there so that you can see it. And I also because I want to use them up because I, I have too many candles. <laughs> Um, but it makes for a nice ambiance, but anyway, I believe, she, is she Swedish? Oh yeah, <laughs> it says Swedish death cleaning and I'm like, is she Swedish? Of course she's Swedish. So it sounds kind of more horrifying than it actually is. It just means that you want to be prepared for the, when your time comes and you pass away, you don't want to leave all your clutter to your loved ones for them to deal with all the rubbish so she gives advice from her point of view on decluttering and it's a long time that i read it so i don't really remember her method i just remember the special kind of viewpoint of trying to prepare yourself for your own passing and uh, have that be the encouragement you may need to downsize more because when you can't take any of your possessions with you into heaven so there's no meaning of holding on to them on earth um yeah I liked it the title is a bit creepy but it's still a nice read and all of these books are easy reads so if you're like me and you just need an easy read um, I don't really deal with the complicated stuff anymore nowadays, so if you like an easy read, then these books are for you, I think, aside from maybe this one, but we'll get to that later. I didn't even show it properly. Oh my god, this video is so long. Okay, let's hurry up. But yeah, I would recommend it. This is how you spell it if you want to search for it on any website. It was only $8.99. I have probably I got it for less because I got it off eBay, which is what I always do. Then we have oh god, it's so cool. The Sentimental Person's Guide to Decluttering by Claire Middleton. Um which I like the take on that that it's for the sentimental person, for someone who has a hard time letting go, like me someone with strong attachments to stuff. I like that, but it hasn't lessened my attachments. So I still feel stuck, but it, um, it has uh, suggestions like, for example, like finding a good home for your stuff because it can help you to let go if you feel that you're giving your stuff to a good home so you don't feel worried about what happens to it and just taking it a bit, a bit more slowly than other people would and I don't really remember any other like advice from here but I think if you struggle with decluttering if you have strong attachments this book might be helpful for you I don't I'm not sure because it I still struggle with the attachments even after reading this so I'm not sure how helpful it is but it's certainly a different viewpoint than all the other decluttering books that I've even the life journey of magic of tidying up that I'm such a fan of 
it still doesn't really get into how you can help yourself when you actually have such strong attachments to stuff. It just concludes with keep it with confidence and wait for the day when you are ready to part with it. And sometimes like with a move coming up or something that's not enough or you just you just feel frustrated with how much stuff you keep so i think this is a good book and i would recommend it so yeah you might want to read this have i shown it long enough maybe you want to read the title okay oh i forgot to say i'm actually like i did say that i dnf'd one of these so i which means did not finish if if you're not a book talker then you might not know this. I'm new to book talk myself, so DNF means did not finish one of these. But I'm actually decluttering these and I'm actually selling them if you want to buy them. I'm selling both for £15, including postage. And they're worth 19.99 US dollars and 17 US dollars. It doesn't say it in pounds, but um I just realized that like I should only keep my favorite decluttering books and I only now putting them all here in one pile I realized that I still have way too many I have so many maybe I can let maybe I let go of this or maybe I'll read it again I'm not sure I think I should read it again actually um anyway um I tried to only keep my favorites because it's counterproductive to decluttering if you keep too many decluttering books if this doesn't actually help you declutter like I make more space if I only keep my favorites so I kept the Marie Kondo books and yeah maybe I can actually declutter more maybe these but I'm not sure if I should read them again to try and see if I get any more advice out of them but yeah i'm selling these but they are still good books it's not that like i didn't like them i just don't have the space to keep so much stuff okay i have some decluttering books and some decluttering related books maybe i should do a separate video for the decluttering related books i can't be bothered i'll just we'll see i have two books about owning only a hundred things but it's, they cheat because they can you can count a whole category like all your books as one item or all your bags so you don't end up with a hundred books so it doesn't make any sense but um i read this one first and i only re recently read this i might also declutter this as well because i already have this and i don't really need two i love the feminine look of this book but I guess I don't need, need it because I'm not trying to live with a hundred items as of yet. No, I don't think I'll ever get to a hundred, but I would like to own only what I need. That would be great. I'm especially thinking about clothes. <sighs> For example, I recently bought three tank tops that I didn't need. I only had more than three and I think three is what I need and now I have like eight. And why did I do that? <laughs> I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> no, that's mean, but I, yeah, that's, it, it can be so frustrating. But anyway, the 100 thing challenge, how I got rid of almost everything, remade my life and regained my soul by Dave Bruno. Which is obviously a different take on decluttering because he try to reduce his stuff to only a hundred possessions i don't think he counted clothes i don't know if he counted clothes or i don't remember but not underwear because otherwise you have <laughs> you <laughs> you get to like hundred things too fast um i will be keeping this i would recommend it but i feel like it's better suited to someone who may already be a minimalist and wants to get down to a hundred items who has more than a hundred items and wants to become more ex uh, of an extreme minimalist. Um, 
But yeah, it's an interesting read. You can still read it out of interest, which is what I did. But if you're still struggling with decluttering, with letting go of things, then maybe this one is for you. And then by the life changing magic of tidying up, because that book is amazing. <laughs> and then we have The Joy of Living with, with Less. How to Downsize 200 Items and Liberate Your Life by Mary Lambert. It's a bit golden here, the title, so I hope you can read it well enough. It's a bit shiny. Here you go. Um, this book, and first of all, has gilded edges, which is so pretty. Then it has lots of images, which is lovely. Nice to look at. She tries to get this done, I believe, in a year. And she gives, she says how many months she would give to each category. For example, one and a half months for jewelry, cosmetics, and miscellaneous items. And she. She breaks it up into like, um, there's some other, like she breaks it up into categories kitchen, or into rooms and then she gives you the steps what you can do to declutter. For example, she says what problem you may be encountering. For example, problem unused or broken china, duplicate dinner or tea sets and old mugs and casserole dishes. Solution, throw out broken china, take old dishes, mugs and dinner or tea sets to a thrift store or sell online or through a newspaper. So she has different problems you may encounter and then different solutions. So this is kind of how the book is structured. What annoys me is how she says thrift and then in bracket charity shops. And she does it for several words. And I, I believe she lives in Britain, so I don't know why she does that. Just speak British, for God's sake. Or if you're gonna be American about it, then just be Amer then just speak a, like an American and forget about the translation. We are not that stupid. We know what a, a thrift store is, isn't it? Um, what was I gonna say? What else? Yeah, but this was the part three, I believe, where she breaks down room by room or category by category. Oh yeah, I was gonna say she sometimes shares with us her journal entries about decluttering, which I feel like is so personal. I don't know if it was necessary, but it's interesting anyway. What are the other... No, this wasn't part three. What am I saying? I don't remember how the book is structured, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting read if you're trying to get 200 items. But I feel like if you're still stuck like me, then you don't really need this yet. Okay, now we're coming to the books which are like... I'm gonna try to be quick about it and keep this video not more than an hour because... Maybe when I edit it, it can become just a tiny bit shorter, but... Okay, um, these are just decluttering related, not really about decluttering. Dopamine Nation by Anna Lempke. Mary Lambert and Anna Lempke is not interesting. This was by Mary Lambert and this is by Anna Lempke. Such similar sounding surnames. Finding Balance in the Age of Indulgence. This is about addictions, but I thought it could help someone if they have a shopping addiction. So that's why I've thrown it in here. And it's a really interesting book. For example, it says that when you stop using the, your drug of choice over a longer period of time, you may start feeling joy more or you, you might become happier because your brain gets used to not getting that dopamine hit all the time. So you don't need that dopamine hit to be happy. So simpler things can actually start bringing you more joy. I'm still hoping for it, but I haven't really stopped shopping yet. <sighs> it's so hard. Anyway, um, yeah, there's one person who was addicted to self-pleasuring. 
so just be aware of that if you want to read it <laughs> but um yeah it's a really interesting book it uh, i don't yeah i don't know what else to say about it but it's definitely recommendable and just keeping this fast here then we have digital minimalism choosing a focused life in a noisy world by cal newport um i enjoyed this book very much in fact i loved it and it was about it's not really about minimalism how to own fewer digital files which is what i first thought but it's actually about more of a digital detox like how to not be on social media every day or like all the time or even limit yourself to only answering text messages in the evening or something like that um yeah it was a very interesting read and i would also recommend that which i feel like it's related because it contributes to a calmer more tranquil will more tranquility would come alive more tranquility more zen if you will in your life if you want a more peaceful life if that is why you're downsizing this can also contribute to the same goal but it's not really minimalism per se and then we have some eco-friendly books The no spend year and the year of less um the no spend year how i spent less and lived more michelle mcgaha i don't know how if i'm pronouncing this right this is her name very small um yeah this has lots of advice on how to spend less And just what she did and she went to free events and uh, actually for example I remember her saying that she was a bit embarrassed in front of her friends that she couldn't spend anything but you don't actually need to worry because most of her friends I don't remember if she was embarrassed or if I'm making this up but she did say that her a lot of her friends actually agreed that they also needed to they were actually grateful for doing something uh, cheaper with her than they usually did so if you ever feel embarrassed in front of your friends don't be because they might be in the, in the same boat i don't remember the details but i liked it but i didn't love it but i liked it i don't think i've read this i must read it the year of less how i stopped shopping gave away my belongings and discovered life is worth more than anything you can buy in a store by kate flanders yeah it sounds like a similar read to this one and i like this one so i might like this one i really must read it i can't remember if i've read it or not but i think i haven't so i need to get into that then we have go gently by bonnie wright actionable steps to nurture yourself and the planet i dnf this and I'm actually, I've actually listed it on eBay and I'm actually going to sell it, but by now the price has really gone down on this. I bought it for a lot more money, so I actually might just have to sell it on the Ziffit if nobody wants it for the price I'm asking, because the price that it's on on other listings, I can't even cover the postage from that. So, but this might be interesting for, but this is more about how to be eco-friendly and yeah it is dedicated to soil water air and light i can't say much about it because i haven't finished it but there are like lots of pretty pictures in there and it's about how to be eco-friendly maybe we can read the introduction go learn a big picture look at the climate movement Go see, observing the habits you practice at home, connect to the issues at large. Shouldn't it be how the habits you practice at home connect to the issues at large? 
go organize planning tools to help you achieve your goals go shop how your choices create change go cook oh, i don't need to do all of them but it, this gives you an idea what's what it's about um it could be a really lovely book and it would also be like a good um coffee table book but i just our coffee table is full as it is typical and uh yeah, i just dnf'd it so i just don't see myself reading it i think i was just greedy when i bought this i was just being greedy like i just wanted the pleasure of buying myself something and wasn't really honest with myself about what i would read and also probably because she's in harry potter so i thought it would be interesting and then last but not least how to break up with, with fast fashion a guilt-free guide to changing the way you shop for good lauren bravo which as the title says is about how to break up with fast fashion and i like this book um it helps you to break up with fast fashion which a lot of minimalists actually do and a lot of your focus shifts from quantity to quality if you have fewer things you might want something you might want to invest in something that actually lasts you so this is a good guide to how you can go about trying to like stop buying fast fashion and buying something better i forgot one book minimalista by shira gill what a lovely surname <coughs> My name is Leah Gill. <laughs> um, yeah, I bought it in German, but the the main title is the same in English. And it's also a very comprehensive one, like the Marie Kondo method. Um, Konmari method, I mean. I feel like this is probably my, maybe my second favorite after the Konmari and Kurashi at home. Uh, after the life-changing magic of tidying up and Kurashi at home. And Goodbye Things, I also really like Goodbye Things. I'm not sure, but it's very comprehensive. And she she says some general stuff at the beginning. And then she breaks it up into rooms. How to translate? Like a cupboard under the stairs and the laundry room. Or what else? show me another room go on bathroom and it also has pretty minimalist pictures um i think this is her own house which the pictures are from but i'm not sure actually could be anyone's home um and then it is yeah oh it's, it's a pretty picture School paper clutter, a minimalist creative corner, creations like your children's artwork you are allowed to throw away. This is how she breaks the book up. I don't know how to explain the book, but I really liked it. I would definitely recommend it. It was a bit more on the expensive side. But maybe by now the price may have come down a lot. I'm just trying to find the price, but I can't find it anywhere. Why is it Munich, London, New York? It says throw everything out that, that isn't useful. Even things need a home. for watching that is it for today finally the video is finished such a long video but i hope you enjoyed it i hope you like long videos if you did then you will have really enjoyed this i hope these um book recommendations and kind of book reviews help you to decide what to read next and if you need any inspiration um on decluttering or minimalism then um yeah then like i hope that these book recommendations help you to figure out what you can read next and i'm sure a lot of this you can get really cheap on ebay if you if you don't mind used books which i don't mind used books anymore i used to see something very special in new books which i still do but 
the amount of stuff that I read it's just so much cheaper to get used and a lot of times you can get really good prices so it's even more special if I buy a book new now and anyway if you did like it then please leave me a massive thumbs up it really helps out my channel with the algorithm to tell people that this video is interesting and push this out to more people I would really appreciate it and I would love for you to subscribe I would l to subscribe I would love to have you here as part of the family it would mean the world to me so please subscribe <laughs> and yeah uh, leave me a comment what's the latest thing you read especially a decluttering video uh, decluttering video decluttering I say decluttering video so often that it comes out of my mouth automatically decluttering book if you have any more decluttering book suggestions that I've missed let me know what I've missed I had another one I think it was called lightly I don't remember the author was it Francine J but I've already sold that on zip it by mistake because it completely zipped my mind that i was going to do this review video so yeah um i've currently filmed one hour and 24 seconds but this video will be a little bit shorter when i edit stuff out but not much because i want to leave the good stuff in for you so anyway so i'm sorry i couldn't review that book as well it was nice it it included not only um not only decluttering advice which it did include but also kind of life advice how to de-stress or stuff like that so that was an interesting take on on living lightly she she didn't only i knew the author was a woman but i don't remember the name maybe francine jaya but i'm not sure um but if you type in lightly in ebay it should come up hopefully hopefully i'm not sure <laughs> um yeah, she just didn't only talk about decluttering, but also about life in general, which was also interesting. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. And take care. Bye-bye.